Hello and welcome back. In my roadmap video I introduced six steps that help you to move from traditional to digital teaching and learning concepts. According to these steps you first select a course, then a learning unit and eventually a content section from that unit that requires roughly 10 minutes in class time. Once digitized and delivered to your students, you can reuse the 10 minutes in class time for other purposes. Central to these steps is step 4, the digitization of the content itself. That is the development of a website allowing the learners to apply their own content acquisition strategies. And to satisfy the different learner types we need digital text, in our case 10 to 15 lines, maybe further information, for example images via hyperlinks and, if possible, video. And eventually we should also generate a few questions for quizzes about the topic. There are two options to arrive at such a website. We can use open content, if there is any, or we have to apply the do-it-yourself principle. My recommendation, before we do it ourselves, let's find as much open content as possible first. But what exactly is open content? And how can we find it? Well, open content, or more precisely, open educational resources, are freely accessible educational media, that is, text, images, video, etc. These media can be accessed with simple search engines and specific filter options, but can also be found via particular websites. Let's see whether we find some text first. With a simple text search, we quickly find several thousands of websites, far too many to look at. My suggestion, start with Wikipedia and if scientifically adequate, modify that text in such a way that you adhere to all copyright regulations. And when you construct the text, whether from scratch or on the basis of your web sources, keep a balance between modularity and thus reusability and cohesion, that is, linguistic connectivity with other texts in the same learning unit. Let's look at images next. The number of images associated with a search term is normally overwhelming. However, most images are copyright protected and cannot be used freely. But if you activate the Tools menu and apply the special filter labeled for reuse, you can confine your search to those images that are hot candidates for free usage. But even these images might not be ready for use and need to be checked carefully. So whatever results you get, make sure the copyright is not violated. Last but not least, video. In YouTube, for example, our search term will retrieve hundreds of videos that may be relevant for us. All these videos can be shared via their hyperlink and if the channel owner has activated the embed option, they can become part of our websites. The result, in our case, where we embedded two videos looks like this. There is one problem though. If a video is deleted from its channel, your link is broken and the website looks like this. Hmm. Not a desirable option for a smooth content acquisition process. My suggestion in such a case, contact the channel owners whether you can use the video. They surely will like it and will look forward to receiving your clicks. By far the best option are those videos that have been given the Creative 
Commons license by their developers and can now freely be used. Even though the YouTube search filter Creative Commons will dramatically reduce the number of videos, we can now be sure that these videos cannot only be shared and embedded, but can even be downloaded and remixed. The only condition, the original author has to be mentioned. By the way, an important option that gives you full video access control should also be mentioned. If you embed a video like this one here and you use the standard code for embedding, it'll normally be played from the beginning to the end. However, an extension of the source attribute in the HTML code allows us to specify the start time and the time where the video should stop. I will come back to these details in another video. So in summary, open content is available and we have a variety of options to access and control it. However, there may be cases where we have to produce the content ourselves. In such cases, we have to make sure that we can produce elements beyond plain text. For example, images using imaging and photo editing software. Audio files using audio editing programs and even video with the help of video editing tools. And we need the necessary technical infrastructure and a considerable portion of media know-how. So my recommendation is clear. Try the open content search before you start on your own or use external help. But whatever option you choose, the digitization of content is not an easy task. It involves creativity, new ideas and requires a lot of support, technical and scientific. And it is, in any case, a team effort. So these are my ideas about the digitization of linguistic content and thus the realization of step four of my roadmap. I hope that some issues are now clear. If not, do not hesitate to contact me. Until then, have a nice time and see you again soon.